new vlog. Today we're going to be looking at some laptop batteries. We're going to take them apart and attempt to salvage some lithium cells from them. And we're going to use those cells to power other projects. So I have these two laptop batteries coming from a Fujitsu Siemens laptop. They're both dead. And these kind of batteries, they usually fail in one of two modes. Sometimes they have a failed electronics board, which means they don't communicate anymore with the motherboard for the correct management and in that case you will probably see a message an error message in your operating systems telling you that it's something wrong with the battery or the other failure mode is that one or more of the cells inside die and the whole battery doesn't reach its nominal voltage anymore and in that case the battery is dead because of that cell I believe these two are in the second category and uh, I think one or more of their cells have died and they don't reach their nominal voltage anymore. When taking these apart, care must be taken not to use excessive force on the enclosure because you risk damaging the cells inside. This can lead to fire or release of extremely toxic chemicals. The enclosure is quite thin and the cells themselves are quite close to the outer case walls so you don't want to be poking too deep with a knife or screwdriver. These enclosures will be sonically welded, so quite hard to take apart, but possible if done with care and if you take your time. At first, you might not even find the place where to put your screwdriver in and start prying open. So if that's the case, you should slowly hit it with a small hammer right on the welding joint to try and break the welding. I've also seen another method, I don't remember who was doing it, but it was in some YouTube video where someone was using a Dremel cutting disc with a rubber cylinder placed on the shaft for depth limiting. So the cutting disc was not allowed to go in more than a couple of millimeters before the rubber cylinder would touch the cutting surface. But this time I'm going to use a classic method of prying this open with a screwdriver. So I managed to pry open this side and I'm going to try and do the same thing all around. Notice I'm always trying to push towards the exterior of the case using the screwdriver so I don't accidentally puncture one of the cells which are right behind this plastic wall. This was a double wall construction or let's say a double wall soldering but I continued to pry upon all along this long edge until I managed to separate the two sides now I think it can be pried open manually. Some protection gloves should be used beyond this point because there are sharp pieces of plastic that could uh, puncture your skin. That's why it's not really possible to repair this kind of cells because of course you could go in there and replace the damaged cell but unfortunately you cannot open it without damaging the outer shell too much and making it unusable afterwards. So inside this battery we notice we have eight cells and they will probably be arranged in a series parallel combination. In here we see the uh, battery management circuit and as I was telling you earlier about the two failure modes it can either be this PCB right here failing and the battery won't communicate with the uh, laptop motherboard anymore or it can be one or more of these cells which fail and the whole pack fails to reach its nominal voltage. These cells are marked Sanyo 18650 
actually UR 18650F. I'm going to Google their data sheet just to check their uh, nominal voltage and capacity, but that should be pretty close to a normal 18650 cell. So a pretty good score to get out of uh, a damaged laptop battery, depending on how many cells are still alive. I disregarded my own warning on using protection gloves when opening these plastic cases and I managed to get a small cut. So you've been warned, please use protection while opening these uh, plastic enclosures because there are sharp edges that will cut your skin. As we can see the two batteries are identical and they have identical battery management circuits inside. Now the cells won't easily come off this uh, bottom piece so they probably must have some silicon adhesive on the back of the cells keeping them in place. At this point you really need to be careful don't try to poke your screwdriver and uh, try to lever the cells out because you will most likely uh, damage them during the process. So I'm going to try to slowly peel some of the cells off So I noticed that if I try to peel the plastic itself, it kind of starts to work. Okay, so I see they've used some double-sided tape to secure the cells. So the bottom plate was quite nice with separators between the PCB contacts, quite a nice build. So now I'm going to cut all of these wires, making sure I don't short anything in the prices. In here, stuck on this cell, if we look closely we can see the thermistor used to measure the temperature of this pack. Ok, so we got our first cell out. I'm going to continue and do the same and separate all the others while making sure I don't short anything in the process. Ok, so I have taken these 8 cells apart and now the first check we can do is uh, to measure their voltage. If we see something between 3 and 4.2 volts the cell is probably ok. So let's start measuring these bottom cells. This one is 2.8 volts, 2 2.8, 2.5, 2.7, 3.3, 2.7, and 3.3. I must say I'm worried about these cells especially the ones at 2.5 volts that's kind of the cutoff voltage for this kind of cells so they shouldn't have reached that level but anyway I'm going to run them through a charge cycle and see how they behave afterwards next I mark every cell with a number so that I can sort and identify individual cells and I use the lithium ion charger to charge all of these cells in the voltage column of this table we can see the voltage measured on each cell after a complete charging cycle. I then used the same device to discharge each cell individually. Unfortunately my charge and discharge controller is not very accurate nor does it allow adjusting the cutoff voltage on discharge. So I could only discharge these cells down to 3.0 volts while the datasheet of these cells gives a 2.75 volts cutoff voltage for the full rated capacity. Even so, we can still use the data to do some comparing and select the best cells out of the set. I also noticed that cells who were paralleled inside the battery pack had less capacity, 
this is quite a small batch so a conclusion is not that conclusive from this small test but judging from these two packs you could say that running them in parallel gave them a shorter lifespan i did not find any completely dead cells but there were some cells who were below the discharge cutoff voltage of 2.75 volts and that probably prevented the integrated charge controller from charging them again while connected in the pack. About the PCB inside the battery pack, here is a photo of it and we can notice some of the important components. The BQ8030 seems to be a custom device made by TI for a specific customer so I couldn't find much info on this device other than it seems to be a battery gauge IC. The other important device is the BQ29330 which is a lithium battery protection IC designed for 2, 3 or 4 cell packs. We can also see a shunt resistor used for measuring current and this strange glass package device glued on the PCB. I don't know what this is but judging by its position it seems to be in series with the battery pack so it could be some sort of power transistor but please leave more info in the comments section if you know better. Just for comparing and control I also discharged a Panasonic NCR18650B down to 3.0 volts. These have an even lower cutoff voltage at 2.5 volts so the result is not surprising because there was still a lot of charge left in the cell at 3.0 volts. At the end of the test I've decided to keep only the cells that had over 1400 mAh and scrap the rest to the recycling bin. You will be seeing these lithium cells in an upcoming project but I won't give any details on that before its release so you should subscribe to my channel to get future video updates. And as always thank you for watching this video and don't forget to click the like button below.